Okay, this is a low HF150 general coverage receiver. This radio was manufactured in the uh, early 1990s. It was manufactured in the UK. Just covers the HF bands, nothing else. So from long wave up to uh, 30 megahertz. It's a simple, basic receiver. I will just have a quick look at the uh, the front panel. And uh, you'll see uh, on the left here, we've got um, a volume knob, which also controls the on and off switching. We've got a 6.3 uh, mil jack for um, headphone connections. We've then just got three push buttons on the front. You can see these are marked memory, mode and fast. Uh, these both switch the mode function from uh, AM to SSB and CW. And this radio doesn't have FM mode on the HF bands. It does have synchronous detection for AM. And it has a couple of filters that we can switch in and out using these buttons. We can also uh, dial through the memories. And we have a fast tuning mode. This is quite important because there isn't any band switch of any sort with this receiver. So to tune up and down through the HF spectrum, uh, we need to be using this uh, fast uh, button. And I'll show you that a little later. And then, of course, we have the uh, the main tuning knob. Um, this isn't um, a lightweight sort of a spin type knob. It's fairly, it's got a bit of resistance, but it's quite a smooth operation to it. The radio itself is in a, a robust metal case, uh, bearing in mind that this is probably coming up for about 30 years old now. This one's held up pretty well. There's a few little scuffs on this one, but uh, it's in relatively good condition. Uh, just a standard LCD display for the frequency. I'll quickly just uh, power this one up and uh, you can see how it comes up. We'll go through the various uh, tuning procedures and modes later. The display isn't backlit in any way. And there is no S meter with this radio. Okay. And um, you'll see the grill on top. We have an inbuilt uh, speaker. It's capable of quite uh, decent audio considering it's uh, a small receiver. We'll just turn it around. And uh, we'll have a look at the rear panel. And uh, as you can see, we've got a little 3.5 millimeter jack. Uh, this was for an external keypad where you could uh, you'd have a little keypad, probably a, a bit larger than a computer mouse, and you could uh, dial in frequencies directly. Um, they're pretty rare now, very rare to see those on the second hand market, uh, market, but we've got an SO239 for our antenna connector. We've got a switch here at the back which switches between an attenuation position, normal and whip. I think potentially there's a, if you just have a whip on the back of this, you can increase the sensitivity slightly. We have two spring clip connectors for a wire antenna and underneath. We have a record out jack, 3.5 mil again. An external speaker jack and we have a DC power connector now you'll notice obviously this hasn't got a DC power connector in it but I uh, did power it up a moment ago and the reason I can do that is because I've actually put some uh, AA batteries in this this takes eight AA size uh, batteries so you can use the receiver sort of fully portable the batteries are in these little trays. I'll just see if I can without knocking the camera over. Yeah, I'll pull out the battery tray. So here's one of the battery trays and you see we've got uh, four AAA batteries in each tray. They just slide in there and they clip nicely home. And all in all with the batteries connected and the metal case it's quite a weighty little receiver. Feels quite well built. So next we'll have a little look at uh, how we tune this. Given that um, we've got a minimum of controls on the front. 
as we've seen. And um, I'll just get it back into view. Now, as I said, we've got no band switch or anything like that with this radio. So we're on uh, the 49 meter band. We're on six megahertz at the moment. So if we press the fast button here, let's press it once. You'll see now using the tuning dial, we can step up through the HF bands. Okay, so for example, we could go to the 25 meter band, press the fast button again, and there we are. And then we'll dial up using the tuning knob in uh, one kilohertz steps. If we need to go quicker, we just press the fast again. We can step up and we step up to the 19 meter band and so on. And then we can dial through. To change modes, press the mode button as you expect there. A for AM, and these then are various forms of uh, synchronous uh, detection. We can select lower sideband, upper sideband. We've also got uh, lower sideband SSB, upper sideband, and uh, back to the various AM settings. AN, as you saw there, we'll just scroll back around. We can scroll up and down using these. That's AM narrow, AN. Okay, and that's just the standard AM filter. And if we press the mode button again, it defaults back to the frequency readout. And the memories can be reached by pressing the memory button and then dialing through to the memory that you want. So that's a very quick run rundown on the radio. As I said, produced in the early 1990s, they were quite uh, quite a costly receiver at the time. There were a number of uh, reviews of this receiver in some of the big magazines, uh, QST and the uh, Radio Society of Great Britain magazine, Radcom. And uh, I know the Radcom review spoke quite highly of the radio. Uh, the Medium Wave Circle has also done a review of this radio. And they've rated it as much much better than something like a, a Kenwood R1000, which was available 10 or more years before this low H, HF150. So next we'll see it in action, but that's a quick little introduction to the radio. They're not often seen on the second-hand market. They were never as popular as some of the uh, the mainstream radios. But they have got a good reputation. So thank you for watching this introduction. And in the next video, we'll see something of this radio in action.